Here's the Ford carriage assembly, glued it together so I can paint it all at once. Here's the rear carriage assembly pieces. And it'll wind up looking something like that. There's this, uh, use these four holes as to help me locate, because you can see that in four holes and the axle assembly. I wanted you to see the slot that was created by the laminations. Let me just insert an axle piece into that. That creates your axle tree. I plan to glue together the rear carriage assembly and paint it up. I'll have to be adding the brake structure later. Then both the fore and rear carriage assemblies will get the brass work put on them. This is the fore carriage assembly. You can see I've painted it red and put on the brass etched parts. I blackened them, but uh, in my experience the blackening has a tendency to flake off. The reason you don't paint brass is that the paint has a tendency to chip off. It turns out to be a wash, except that you can touch up paint. You can't touch up the blackening process so well. This is the fore carriage. The upper bolster fit on that. When the wagon's assembled, the box of the wagon fits on the four bolster itself, sits right down on top of it, and then the axle and the assembly turns underneath the wagon. Maybe difficult to see, but um, these are bolts that go through the assembly, and on the other side, they are have nuts that tie them down. These are represented by some gasket material cut very small squares with holes in them put there and then I paint over them. It's the fore carriage. The after carriage or the rear carriage much the same thing. On this one I've left the bolts lengthened show that as you put them on you'll have to go back and cut them off. I use a rotary cutter for that. This is the rear carriage assembly. We've added the brake mechanism which as far as I can tell is about the only actual mechanical system. I had a little bit of a problem letting glue drip into some of the joints and it had to be taken apart and cleaned up and put back together again, but now the brakes do work. You can see them moving a little bit there. Okay. When it's assembled, there'll be a long lever coming out that'll rotate that bar and cause the brakes to function. This gives some idea of what the carriage assembly will look like. Let's see if I can zoom in here. See that the rear carriage assembly is actually tied by a pin to this pole here. You'll see an extra hole there, there's actually one there. The wheelbase can be lengthened and shortened 
much like semi-trailers today. The front carriage still needs the single and double trees added. We'll do that after a while. The wheels aren't finished yet. They need to be painted. Have the rims put on. That'll be interesting. But for the most part, that's what it looks like. Here's the front carriage with the double and single trees installed. that completes the undercarriage. Here are the plans for the next step. This drawing shows the construction of the bottom of the box. But the instructions ask us to begin with the sides attached to the bottom rail. side details are added. Here are the pieces we'll be cutting out for the rails, for the sides. Let's see if we can close in here. You can see that the position of the details have been lightly burned into the side. 